In this episode, we dabble in something we've never dabbled in before. Let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Oh. From the results of a giveaway to sandpaper? I don't know. This is kind of abrasive. We do get into some small scale stuff with some large scale effects. I mean, this thing is really freaking me out. I tell you what else is freaking me out, seeing Clinchfield in Minnesota. And also check out what the curmudgeon's gripe of the week is this week. Only in this episode of Sue the Milwaukee Road. Recently I had the opportunity to sit down with the Second Section podcast crew and talk about some of the little details. In this case it was small vehicles, but little details nonetheless. All the small things. And yeah. I'm going to give you a look at the grill just with that little bit in there. So you can see between the two, it's subtle. It's not much, but it's knocking off how shiny. And it basically looks like, you know, Justin Jefferson's teeth. I'm so damn grateful. I grew up really wanting gold fronts, but that's what you get when Wu-Tang raised you. So I did not know they did this. This is cool. Yeah, so we're just going to hit the draw. See what happens. Oh, look at that. Oh. Michael, Michael Shea. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> You're the winner of the William Sampson giveaway this evening. There is no giveaway with this week's quiz question. Well, there should be. Railroad mergers were subject to review and approval by the Interstate Commerce Commission, or the ICC, from 1920 to 1995, and by the Surface Transportation Board, or the STB, since 1995. The Interstate Commerce Commission mandated that the Sioux line must divest of some lines in the interest of preserving competition. What railroad was not involved in a Sioux-related merger activity in 1986? Was it A, the Milwaukee Road, B, the m and s C, Wisconsin Central Limited, or D, Lake States? We'll find out later in this episode. And a winner Mick Shea was, it turns out, Mick is a BNSF modeler, circa 2010. While this car isn't actually 2010, it's early 2000s, so it's going to work. I end up taking a look at the details on these particular vehicles, and as I said, I was going to snap it up, and yes, it can work in end scale too. And you say, what do you use? Well, yes, the taco sauce. We're going to put this into the grill to be able to give it a little bit more definition. Again, that's a simple technique. It can be used in all scales, even in N. As we move forward here, I end up using what this is actually used for, the panel line wash, and running it through the panel lines of the vehicle. And you look at it and you think, boy, it actually looks like you're just kind of slopping it on. If you don't get it following the entire panel, you just put a little bit more on and it'll start to continue to kind of flow and fill in using that capillary effect. As you can see here, we're not all done. I end up cleaning this stuff up a little bit using a cotton swab with a little bit of mineral spirits. And I rub it along the side of the vehicle to kind of dissipate and well, thin out the actual taco sauce that was applied. After we complete that task, you take a look at the before and then the after. It's a subtle technique, but very effective. After snapping up the panel lines, I take some black paint and I actually paint in the wheel well just so it's all black in there. I use a toothpick. Simple process. And now that the wheel well is painted black, I end up grabbing some sandpaper. Now this is AK Interactive, does a few different grits of sandpaper with foam. You don't need to use this, you just want something fairly fine. As you can see, I've kind of worn this one out, but what I'm trying to do here is scuff up the wheels. Now, if you don't use the AK Interactive, any fine sandpaper will work. This is KNS sandpaper. They have a lot of different grades. I find it effective in a lot of different applications when sanding vehicles, but again, we're working with the tires. I work in a circular motion, just trying to scuff it up. Not that easy to see right here, but trust me, it's a flatter finish than the gloss that originally was on it. Now I move on to the good old antennas. This stuff is really fine. As you can see, it's a stainless steel wire, 0.004. I use this on the HO scale models as well. And what I'm going to do here is use a pin to mark a spot where the drill will go. Think of it like an awl. You end up putting this little mark in here and the drill bit's going to be able to sit there. It just gives you a little bit more control than trying to just drill straight into the plastic. 
The drill bit that we're going to be using is a number 80, a 0 0.0135 diameter drill bit. Use that little dimple that you created with the pin to be able to set the drill bit and then start drilling to be able to then, of course, drill the hole and then apply the antenna. Now, the hole itself is a little bit larger than the antenna wire, and that's fine because the glue is going to end up filling that excess void. But when you trim this stuff off, if you do lose a piece, let it go. Don't try to find it. It's going to be basically uh, impossible to be able to find if you drop the stuff on the floor. As you can see how fine this is, again, 0 0.004 going into a 0 0.0135 hole. Using the glue, I do use this quick drying tacky glue. It works out well because it's actually somewhat pliable and it doesn't fully set up into a rock hard form. And that's okay if somebody bumps the antenna, they don't bend it, they actually kind of just move it in the glue and you can kind of reposition it accordingly. But as you can see here, place this down into the hole that you just recently drilled. Any of that excess glue, if there is any, I just use the pin to be able to kind of wipe it off. But beyond that, you clean this up, align the antenna, make it look the best that you can. And when it comes down to it, Mick might have one of the most detailed end scale trucks that's out there because, well, these are some little nitty gritty details. Nitty gritty. And I kind of like that type of stuff. And it's kind of unique and different if you have a conversation with people about the details of, well, in this case, a super detailed truck. We're going to drop this. Well, we'll set this down gently and we'll clean up the desk and we'll get moving forward with a few more details in just a moment. <laughs> It's time for Ops. All right, more Ops. Well, it's time for Operations, and here we had the opportunity to run Ken Borowski's Clinchfield Blue Ridge Division in N-Scale. Now, the size of N-Scale, you might say... Well, those are little things. But at the end of the day, this thing packs a lot of punch. When you end up looking at the railroad itself, there's a lot that goes on. In this particular application, this layout is laid out in a 13 by 32 space with a separate 10 by 14 room for staging. It is really well laid out and well designed and a lot of fun to run. We'll take a look at it. It's multi-levels. It's based in 1973. And I'll be the first to admit I don't know a whole lot about the Clinchfield Railroad, but there's one thing to be said. If you're going to tell a story, you can tell your story through your railroad. I think Ken has successfully done this. He's replicated a lot of locations that existed on the actual Clinchfield Railroad. So... Without chatting about this and talking about this, I'm going to let you guys just kind of kick back and enjoy some of the operations that we had while running the Clinchfield. As I mentioned prior, it's about learning the story and the story of the railroad. As you can see here is a lot of coal movement. So you're dealing with a lot of the loaded trains and the empty trains and the loaded trains have pushers and you kind of got to get out of the way for the priority trains. But there are locals on the railroad as well. So I was fortunate enough to be able to run one of those and we'll take a look at a quick video of me taking the siding to allow that priority freight to get by. As this session starts to wrap up, we can see this crew just has to go grab their caboose to carry on down the line. One element that I thought was neat about looking at the Clinchfield here is Ken went to the actual locations to actually model some of the buildings that are on its railroad. So it's pretty cool to be able to see some of that type of stuff because you're really bringing in the actual prototype to your prototype railroad. One thing that I did also like about Ken's locomotives and a lot of his fleet is the details in end scale. Yes, it is small, but at the same time, it's the little things. 
One thing that's neat about N scale is the grand scale they can kind of work within to have these big mountains. Now there is a room off in the distance with a yard and a few other things that are going on. I thought I took some pictures. Apparently I misplaced them. Nonetheless, you can see my locals in the foreground that we saw a little bit earlier. And then off to the right of the gentleman eating his snack is the staging room, which I think was the 10 by 14 room. Nonetheless, it's a nice layout. It's nicely set up. It's a lot of fun. And if you're ever invited to go operate an N-Scale Railroad, jump at the opportunity because it's definitely worth checking out. There's a lot to be seen. There's a lot more that can be done. And at the end of the day, it's all about having fun with the little things. The little things, little things, they try to break me down. You can always learn a little by looking at the real deal. Here we are looking at the prototype and we're at marbles? If I'm gonna live over there, you, you gotta take some of this stuff out. I mean, this thing is really freaking me out. <laughs> I feel like it's gonna come to life in the middle of the night and kill me. <laughs> but Mr. Marbles, he's harmless. If anybody's wondering where marbles or the location is, let's take a look. We're just north of Duluth, just south of Two Harbors, and as you can see here, there's some cars on the siding. And well, one of them was a Clinchfield car, and I thought, you know who would like that Clinchfield car? Ken Borowski. That's right, Ken, he'd get a kick out of this. They're still kicking around. And I'm not going to say these cars are old, because anybody born prior to 276 is going to go, Hey, I'm older than those cars. Well, you're probably older than most of the railroads that are in this country. <laughs> But at the end of the day, cool to see some of these older cars, looking at some of the relics. And by relics, I mean, well, 1276. That was before my time. And it may have been before my time, but I ended up learning a lot about the Clinchfield after operating on the Clinchfield. So definitely cool to see. A big thanks to Ken for having us out and teaching us a little bit about the Clinchfield and N scale. Now it's time to go back in time. Real Penny was hard to go. Before we take a look at the footage, I want to be able to help you orientate yourself as to where we're viewing the footage from. Uh, we're going to look at here, we've got St. Paul located right there, and we've got Minneapolis over on this side here. We're going to zoom in just a little bit. This is going to be in South Minneapolis. We've got the Hiawatha Elevated District right along this area here. And then we've got the main line that came across the bridge. The Minnesota Commercial still uses this to get down into the Hiawatha Elevated District. This main line used to cross here and tie into the 29th Street Depression. Um, as well as had South Town Yard located right along this area here. But as we zoom into where Bob took the footage from, it was right over in this area here. We've got Hennepin Avenue. Uh, Hennepin Avenue will be seen in the distance. There are a couple of signals that were located here. This parking garage can also be viewed uh, in the video, but we'll take a look. And I believe Bob was actually standing in this neighborhood, somewhere right along in this area here. We'll drop him in position to give you an idea of where the scene looks like from here today. Uh, we look this direction, you're going to see a couple of signals on each side. That parking garage is off in the distance. And then as Bob swings the camera around, he will then look off and see the caboose go off into the distance here. We'll notice that the times have changed, but it's kind of cool to go back in time. Thanks for recording this, Bob. We'll look forward to seeing some more vintage footage in the future. As Sue Caboose number 90 takes us out, I want to take a moment to reflect back at some of the elements that we can draw from these older videos in this application, not just the freight cars, the locomotives, and the cabooses, but we can also look at line side. You can see some of the line poles that might be in a shot, or even just on the very left screen, Bob captures just the edge of a Griswold. Nice catch, Bob. Did you figure out this week's quiz question with the process of elimination? Known the Milwaukee Road and the m and s merged together in January 1st of 1986, and then the Lake States was formed later in 1986, leaving C, the Wisconsin Central, to form April 3rd, 1987. 
The Sioux Railroad announces the sale of the Lake State's Transportation Division to private investors, forming the new Wisconsin Central. Oh, it's those little decals. Oh, the tiny license plate, yada, yada, yada. This is a nice detail. You can get the microscale license plates as well worth putting on your cars. A good pen to have on hand is this liquid chrome. I've mentioned it in the past. This is a one millimeter. I end up using it for a lot of applications, uh, side view mirrors, sometimes rear view mirrors, bumpers, uh, rims. There's a lot of different applications for a vehicle. For the railroad side, I end up do putting this stuff on the MU hoses, and then after you've dull coated it, it turns into kind of a flat aluminum color. So there are other applications outside of the chroming of it, but as you can see, tiny detail. I don't even think I can see myself in that mirror. All the products that went into this particular vehicle, there are a lot of them, but at the end of the day, I feel like that ends up being a nice looking vehicle. So right out of the box, this is from Atlas, and then obviously we doll it up and end up putting the antenna on all the extra details into it. and. I feel like it's worth it in the end. Hopefully you enjoy this, Mick Shea. You enjoy N-Scale. I'm not going to change over to it because, well, if you're going to get into piggybacks, this is the only piggyback that I'm going to see. N-Scale on the back of an HO scale Suburban. I end up chopping up one of these Suburbans and was going to paint it into Chicago Northwestern paint. Maybe that's a project that I'll try to finish. This one's been sitting idle for, uh, I don't know, three, four years. <laughs> it's not going to probably get done. After working with N scale, the HO scale seems huge. It reminds me of a game we used to play when we used to have the tiny goalie. We were always grateful when he returned to normal size. Here's a Comanche coming at you with a gripe of the week. The gripe of the week this week is about those guys that pay $5 to get into a flea market and then they just stand there and chat with each other. I'm telling you right now, you can do that on the sidewalk or at a local cafe. When it really comes down to it, uh, the old curmudgeon is there to root around and sniff out the good deals. Not watch you stand there and chit chat with your buddies. And that's the curmudgeon's gripe of the week. Root around and sniff out the good deals. Not watch you stand there and chit chat with your buddies. Hello there. About five years ago, I found some simple MP3 players, okay? I went down literally and recorded a train crossing, a grade crossing, and you could hear the wheels squeal and the brakes come on and all that. It's not smoke. They sell just that little transducer. No, no, no. I'm working on something. My Arduino box. Oh, I got started with Arduino, and I don't know who has the lotto on that one. And he has written more code for Arduino than anybody I know. Put a coupler height gauge at the end just for a quick check, make sure it's not coupled up, okay? Good night, guys. Big thanks to everybody that watches to the end that has hit like, hit subscribe, as well as made comments in the past. It's those actions that help share this content, so if you haven't checked out other episodes, feel free to do so. You can also check out the tour of the GN1970, as well as the past episodes of the GN in 1970. 70s. Root around and sniff out the good deals. Not watch you stand there and chit-chat with your buddies. <laughs>